Remake, nearly two years ago, I think it was June 2019 it was. Oh, how the world was a different place back then, when I could just leave the house and get a haircut at, uh, at my leisure. <laughs> Little did we know of the shitstorm that was about to come and kick us in the nutsack. Anyway, June 2019, put a review out on the 3D Connection CAD Mouse Pro Wireless. It's still, to this day, their flagship mouse on their website. You can still buy it. It's like the, the, main, the main Mac Daddy. Mac Daddy? People still say, no, probably not. Uh, but anyway, I'm not gonna pretend like I do this for everything that comes through TFI, but I have been using this very mouse every single day since I put that review online. So in many ways, I'm kind of in a perfect position to judge its longevity and pass comment on its livability. Like, how has it been after long-term use? So. Not so much in other ways, but I'll, I'll get into that. But before that, if you'd like to help support TFI and the work that I do here, you can do it without actually even giving me anything. So if you're an existing Autodesk software user, or if you're thinking about subscribing up to a new Autodesk license like AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, anything, you can click my referral link down in the description, which also shows Autodesk's current running promotions and discounts. What then happens is that link takes you over to your local Autodesk store, the same page as you would have gone to anyway, but Autodesk will know that I sent you. And then when you renew your license or you subscribe to a new one after clicking that link, I get a very nice referral fee from Autodesk, which is worth more than thousands of people watching YouTube ads every month. Links in the description, and thank you very much for watching TFI. But just so we're clear, 3D Connection have got no idea that I'm making this video. I haven't been in touch with them. I haven't spoke to them in about a year, actually. <laughs> don't even know if I've got a contact there anymore, if I'm honest. But uh, th this isn't another review either. Like, I've already done the review of this. You can check that out. This is more of a review of how I feel about it after nearly two years of using it. And you don't got to be Columbo to have figured out by now that if I'm still using this after two years, a bit of a clue as to where I'm heading with this. But... <laughs> Just to put things into perspective, this is this is kind of a confessionary moment, uh, which it pains me to admit. But I'm not exa I'm not exaggerating, mate. I use my PC here, which means I have my hand resting on this mouse on average at least 15 hours every day, and that's a bare minimum uh, of me not wanting to publicly admit to being sat here for longer than that. Uh, there cannot be another living human. The, the car, it's not possible who's put more wear and tear through this mouse than I have. Uh, but I don't travel with it though, that's one thing. Uh, it's, it does stay here, it doesn't move. Uh, and I do look after my property very carefully within reason, you know, I don't molly coddle it or anything like that. But based on very rough ballpark estimates, uh, I'd estimate I've, let's, let's say I've used this for around 6,000, 8,000 hours of hands-on use. That's how much I've put through this mouse since owning it. Uh, and, it, and this next bit kind of means nothing unless you know me personally, but I'm that guy who gets super irritated over the tiniest of things, right? Like zero to infuriated in unreasonable seconds, but I'm almost always right. I just, I see imperfections and incompetence in things and people far quicker than most other people do. And the biggest compliment that I can give this thing is that I haven't once been annoyed by it in the two years that I've been using it. So we could probably wrap it up there. Like that's that's it for me, that's it. But I suppose you need more than that in a video. Another positive though that I've taken from this mouse is that its biggest appeal to engineers and designers was its software integration, that driver support, the way that it lets you map buttons on the mouse to actual commands within the likes of AutoCAD, Inventor or SolidWorks. Uh, I made a big deal of that in the original review. But you think, the thing is I don't design anything. I don't use CAD applications as a day job. So. Not once have I ever used the software integration, but I here I am, I still find myself using this two years later. I truly believe, I believe that the software integration, the API integration, it's borderline mandatory if you do use CAD all day, every day. But even without using it, I still love this thing. It's a, it's class. I do have one major criticism though, which I raised years ago and it's still, it's, ne it's never gonna be addressed at this point, but it takes ages to configure button mappings, right? That's just the nature of the beast because all of the mappings change based on design context, which is a good thing. But a company like 3D Connection, who are owned by Logitech, they really should have by now implemented at least an optional cloud hosting solution for your custom configurations. For example, if I take this mouse and I plug it into a laptop, log in with 3D Connection account, it should pull my settings and sync them from a cloud account so I can just start using it on a laptop. It doesn't though. You can export your settings from one PC to another using a file, but that's not the same. <laughs> it's just not the same thing at all. Uh, if it was possible to do it like you can do in the likes of Razer Synapse software, then maybe, maybe I'd create my, like spend the time and 
making button mappings for Windows based mappings or something. But there's, I'm a unique case, right? Like I work daily through remote desktop. I chop and change PCs a lot. I rebuild Windows on my PC on a regular basis. So personally, I just haven't invested the time into the mappings, but that's in no way a reflection of how good or bad they are. You know, a full time or a part time drafter or a designer, they are, they really are game changing. As for the other unique selling point of this though, that being that middle mouse button. Yeah, I have actually been using that, but only for web browser scrolling. <laughs> yeah, I don't use CAD programs. Like, I just don't. I might have managed CAD systems and supported them for 20 odd years, but I'm, I'm not the one doing the design work, right? But I have found myself using that middle button, but only because it's like marginally less resistant than pressing down the wheel pan uh, for going up and down on a web page. But uh, what actually prompted me to make this video in the first place was just, just look at it. <laughs> look at it, mate. I've had my hands on that thing for around 8,000 hours and it still looks brand new. Like even the contact pads on the bottom have held up really well. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, but I think 3D Connection must have revised the surface finish on these later units because the earlier CAD mice, like the revision ones, suffered from chronic material flakage. Like if you look at this one here, this is one of the earliest units uh, that, that one actually also suffered from the button actuator issues. That one was used for half the time that this one was used for. And look at the clip of it, it's wrecked. But yeah, it's, this one's held up really well, based, you know, based on the fact I've used it for like 6,000, 8,000 odd hours. Uh, something which um, is definitely showing its age though is the 500 milliamp hour battery in this thing. Uh, the battery though, wow, I mean, Right, after I put that review up, right, I just cracked on with life. I just got on with things and I completely forgot all about this thing even having a battery for months. I was just, I was using it, just, just cracked on, right, just day in and day out. It wasn't until like sort of three or four months down the line when I got a notification from 3D Connection software saying, Oi, mate, your battery's low. I was like, huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot this thing's got a battery in it. Oh, because <laughs> I don't power it off every night. Don't do anything like that. It just stays on the desk and I just come and go to it. It just lasted for months. Two years later, not so much. Like, batteries degrade. That's just like an inherent compromise you accept with wireless devices. And uh, I could have managed the battery better. But to be fair, if I'd bought this, which I didn't, but if I did, I, I have no argument over the fact that I've, I would have had my money's worth out of this by now. And don't, don't get me wrong, the battery isn't busted by any stretch. Not by a long shot. It can probably still go for a full month on a full charge, even without powering it on and off overnight, but it's on a clear slippery slope <laughs> headed in one direction at this point, but that's just the nature of the beast. I uh, don't look into the fact that I don't use the software integration. Like for example, I've also had a Logitech VR Ink Pilot in the drawer for over a year and I've never used it because I just, I just don't design stuff. You know, I can't force myself to use things that don't suit my personal circumstances, but all in mate. This mouse is a cracking package. For, like, for the past two years, I've also had the Razer Naga Trinity mouse here. I mean, not, not flex or anything, but I can buy pretty much any mouse that I want. But I love this, legit. I, can, I keep using it. And the, the size is perfect. It just, my hand slots onto it perfectly. And I also pair it up with a 3D connection mouse pad because like jokes aside, marketing bump aside, they are an actual perfect match. The contact surfaces just complement each other really well. It's noticeably immediately better than a regular fabric-based mouse pad. Uh, I don't have a meaningful way of measuring that, but it's just like it's just like a smooth glide, and it really does allow you to be more precise and quick. Uh, there's, there's there's less friction. I, it's hard to explain, but like all the mouse in the world, the mice in the world that have come and gone over the last couple of years, I'm just I'm just not interested. I just haven't been looking because like for me, this is as good as it gets, and I don't need anything else. So so yeah, that's it, me. I thought you know. I, I did this two years ago and I thought it was worth kind of coming back to it. Uh, it's filler content, if I'm honest. I've got a couple of units coming in over the next few weeks and months and I'm just sort of filling content before they come in. But no, you know, it's it's some, I was just staring at it and thinking, you know, I put a lot of use through this thing and I was just staring at it going, mate, you look pretty damn good for how, how much use I've put through you. So I thought, you know... If you're thinking about buying one of these and you just haven't pulled the trigger on it yet and you just need that extra sort of kick to kind of uh, persuade you to go for it, mate, two years down the line, six to 8,000 hours of use and it's still it's still rocking like an absolute champ. You know, can't grumble about the longevity of this thing. The earlier units, you know, they've, they've come and gone now. 
this one was bought, well, this one would have been manufactured a couple of years ago and clearly any early production issues have been resolved. Uh, with regards to the software issue, or not issues, so the software uh, lack of use <laughs> that I'm going through, I am not suggesting that anybody considers buying one of these if you're not a card user. Absolutely not. There's, I'm sure the Logitech MX mouse, you know, the, there'll be other mice out there that'll be built just as well as this. Probably, you know, ergonomically just as good as this. But, um, you know, so I'm not suggesting that. If you're, if you're a non-card user, I'm not trying to kind of convince anyone to get one of these. But if you are a card user, if you're a designer, if you use any of the flagship sort of main applications, Revit, you know, Max, Autodesk, SolidWorks, Creo, you know, those ones, then the buttons can be mapped directly into your API and call buttons rather than pressing keyboard strokes. So, um, you know, if you are that designer and you want that, so and it changes as well. Like, kind of recovering points that I did on the review, but you know, if you're in a drawing, the buttons change to drawing functions. And then when you're in an assembly, they change to assembly functions. It's sort of changes based on context. So it's ga it's absolutely game changing. And, and pair that up with a 3D mouse, with the 3D connections, 3D mouse and the 2D card mouse. 2D? I'm gonna call that 2D, but you know what I mean. It's uh, it's a, it's an awesome toolkit to have. So. There you go, that'll do it for this one. Uh, if you liked it, do click the thumbs up. If you loved it, get subbed. Uh, more stuff like this coming soon. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna pretend to do this for everything that comes through. Uh, I don't use everything that uh, that I get here for two years. But <laughs> This was something that I have. Anyway, that's it, that's all I've got. Gotta go, you stay pro. Doodles.